Hi guys, Paul Wilson here. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about navigation through your course. Uh, traditionally, and I'm the same as many instructional designers out there when working with Adobe Captivate, quite often I use the traditional back and next buttons. In fact, I almost always use them, even when I use these custom navigations as well. What I like to do is I like to give my users choices. And we're talking about adult learners here. So really what I'm what I'm doing is is satisfying the adult learners need to be flexible to choose their own path. And the best way I can do that of course is give them multiple options. So with my courses, most cases they're typically pretty linear. You could click next, next, next and go through the entire course and and you know answer the multiple choice questions and so on. But I also like to add this this functionality that you see at the top here. I've gone ahead and produced a bunch of tabs across the top. Now these tabs will allow you to navigate quickly to the first page of each module, chapter, lesson, whatever you want to call it. And these buttons down the left hand side will allow you to navigate to the specific pages within those lessons or chapters or again whatever you want to call them. So I've created a basic course here. There's nothing much going on. It's just a bunch of blank slides really. So I have uh, six pages in total. Two pages are considered my introduction and then I have module one page one, module one page two, and then of course I have module two page one and two as well. So really simple uh, and of course right now as it stands because I have the back and next a user could go through all of these in order. But here's the catch. If I'm on the introduction page one and I need to jump down to module two page two I have to click that next button a whole bunch of times so by using this this modular tab button approach here um, I can literally guarantee that any user of your course can get to anywhere within that course within two clicks one click to choose the appropriate module and one click to choose the appropriate page within that module. Now of course you might be asking yourself, well why would you do this? There's a built-in table of contents function within Adobe Captivate. This is just my way of customizing it and making it my own. Of course you can use the table of contents feature and if that's what you prefer you don't need to watch the rest of this video. I'm just giving you an alternative that allows you to customize it the way you want it to look and feel. So let's get started. So on the very first page of my course, I'm on the first page of the introduction uh, section of the course. Um, I've got these three tabs across the top. The first thing I need to do is create a version of these tabs for each module within this course or lesson. We'll just call them modules for now. So the introduction tab, I'm actually using it as a button, but in actual fact, it doesn't do anything because I'm already on the introduction page one page. So the the rollover state literally I've got it disabled by unchecking enable and it's really just the normal state of a white background that matches the content background that you see here. Kind of like a, a file folder within a filing cabinet and of course when you roll over the module one and module two tabs I have them change color. So what I need to do is make sure that the navigation works for these guys. Again there's no navigation on this one but we'll worry about that in a second. Module 1, it has a rollover effect and the action associated with it is to jump to slide 3. That makes sense because module 1 starts on slide 3. And then the same thing for module 2 but in this case it jumps to slide 5 which is where module 2 begins. So what we want to do is we actually want to change this. So let's first of all select these buttons. And I'm going to copy them to module 1 page 1. 
So this is the first page of the next lesson. So I want to change this a little bit. So module two, we'll just start there, still jumps to slide five, that's perfect. Module one, you'll notice that on success it changes to continue. Well, why is that? Well, simply put, the target for that button was the page we just pasted it on, the pasted this button onto. I should point out that I'm, I'm using the word button, but in fact, these are actually smart shapes. This is just a rectangle, and I've checked off the use as button function. And that gives me the rollover effects that I want and the ability to create buttons very quickly. Um, so it's changed to continue. Why is that? Well, again, you know, I've pasted this button that previously um, its success action was to jump to the page that I just pasted it on. I actually wish that Adobe would change this to no action because continue isn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to do nothing actually. Now I want to change the appearance of it because I want to let users know that hey you are on module one. So let's go back to the style section of the properties tab and we'll do two things. First of all we'll disable the rollover effect because we don't need that anymore. We'll go back to the normal state and we'll change this to the color white so that it matches the content area. The introduction button of course now needs to change in a couple of different ways. The first is we need to create that rollover effect. So let's turn that on. We'll enable rollover and we'll just change that to a solid color and we're going to choose the yellow, which is the rollover effect, and now the normal state needs to become that blue color that you see there. That's easy to do because that's just right in our palette there. So that works fine and the module one stays static, but we need to change the actions because previously this was on the introduction page and had no action. But now that we've changed its location to page three, we want the button to take you back to the introduction module. So we're going to change that to jump to slide one. Perfect. So now we've created the buttons that you'll see in module one. Now, what we want to do, I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to do two things. It's kind of a shortcut here. This introduction button is fine. I'm going to copy this over to module two. Okay. And I actually need the module one button from the first page because it matches the state that I want it to be in for module two. I know this might be a little confusing, but hopefully it'll all make sense in a few moments. And I'm going to grab the module two button here, but we are going to change this because again, we are going to the module two section. So essentially we have our buttons for all the possible rollover effects. That's going to take you to slide one. That's going to take you to slide three because that's module one and module two is, oh, it changed it to continue. No problem. We just want to make that no action because we're already in module two and we're just going to change the style. Again, we're going to turn off the rollover effect because we don't need it anymore and we'll go back to the normal state and change the color to white. So we have the tabs for all three of our modules, the introduction, as you can see here, Module 1 goes nowhere, but you have, of course, the rollovers from Introduction and Module 2, and the same thing for Module 3. Let's test that out before we create any more buttons. I'm going to hit the Preview button and then Preview Project. We'll give Captivate a moment to get this all organized for us. 
and we'll see how that works. So we're on the first page of the introduction. That's great. We have our tab to indicate, you know, it's highlighted, it's static, letting us know this is where we are. Let's try jumping to module one. Works. Module one, page one. Let's try jumping to module two. Works. Let's try jumping back to module one from module two. And let's go back to module two from module one and try the introduction. We'll just try a few different variations to make sure that we can get everywhere. Looks good. So now what we need to do is we need to customize our page buttons. So let's do that. Again, the purpose of this really is to give your users the ability to go anywhere within the course and give them the freedom and flexibility to choose uh, to jump forward, take the course in a completely different order than you intended it, but also the real benefit is again allow users to jump back real quickly to different sections of the course so that they can review the material. So here we have two buttons. Each module of course has two pages within it. So we're on the introduction page one. Quite frankly, much like the tab at the top, we don't need to go there because we're already at, at that spot. So the action for this, of course, is already set for no action. I've gone ahead and done that. But the action for page two will be to actually jump down to, and we'll just change that here, slide two. So these buttons will work. But what we want to do is now copy them. to the additional pages. Right? So now we're on introduction page two. So this button, you can see it's switched over to continue. Let's just make that no action like we did before and change page one so that it jumps to slide one. Perfect. And what we'll do, of course, is duplicate this for all the remaining modules, but we'll change the title of these buttons to match module one. And module one. Oops. One. One. <laughs> and we'll do We'll copy these guys over to here. And then now we're in module two, so I'll have to edit these buttons again. We'll just change that to module two. and we'll copy those to the final page of the course and there we are. I've just realized as I've gone through this we haven't copied the tabs over to the remaining pages of the course so the module 2 section we'll copy those to the second page of module 2 and for the module 1 section we'll copy those onto the remaining pages or page in this case of module one and for our introduction page we'll copy that to the second page of the introduction so that it's all there so let's just make sure our page buttons all work the way they should so here is introduction page one that's going to jump to slide one we're on page two so there's no action here we're in module one, page one, so this should, should actually be no action because that's where we are. And this should be jump to slide four in this case. And then here we want to jump to slide three and this should be no action. 
because again we're on that page already. And then for module two, no action. And page two will take you to page, the actual page six. So jump to slide six, which is the second page of this module. And then on our final page, we want to give users the ability to jump back to slide five, which is the first page of module two. And there'll be no action for this one here. So I think we've got it. Again, it may seem a little confusing. Uh, hopefully, if you want to review this video again, you should be able to see what I've done here. Uh, the key thing I would say about this process is that build your tabs first, make sure they work, make sure they jump to the appropriate pages, and then copy them to the subsequent pages as needed. Also, make sure that the buttons, as far as timing is concerned, the buttons should actually appear for, and you can do this for all your buttons at once, at once the rest of the slide, and that should work fine. So let's just actually, we'll do a quick double check and make sure that they're all set up for rest of slide. One of the things you might be wondering is why don't I just put this into the background? Again, I want the, ch the, the state of the buttons to change depending on what page you're on. So uh, they're, they're not just navigation controls, but they're also a visual cue to the user as to where they are within the course. So let's just make sure these are rest of slide. Just about done here. And I just noticed as well that it's paused after 1.5 seconds. You may want to take that off if your content lasts longer than the, uh, the 1.5 second default. Um, but we'll talk more about that in another video. So let's preview this. Let's see how it works. This is just very basic. It should give you an idea of how you could apply the same button strategy for your own courses. So here we are on our first page in the course. As you can see, all my rollover effects work fine. Like I said before, you can go next, 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 next through the course, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is give users the ability to choose which module to jump to and then choose a specific page. So let's just test that out. I want to jump to the first page of module one. Boom, I'm there. The first page of module two. Boom. I'm there. And of course I have the option to go to the second page of any of these modules. That's not going to do anything for me, so there we are. No problem. Everything works as expected. Again, you can apply this to your own courses. Obviously the, the number of buttons down here will be much greater for a typical course. Uh, and you can see how complex this is, but you can also see what the advantage is. It really gives your learners the ability to learn at their own pace and in the order that they wish. It also gives them an opportunity to review material that maybe they missed the first time around. Thanks everyone. If you like this video and the other videos that I've created, hit the subscribe button below. We'll see you next time.